We should be on a mission to compel them to come into God's house so they can strengthen their Christian walk as individuals. Many missions we have before us. And many of these missions, if not all of them, have been started by someone else. Whether it be someone else in the community, other Christians in the faith prior to us, the beginning members of this church, all the way to us today. Missions have been handed down, and now they have fell upon our shoulders to be carried out. Just as Joshua stood before the children of Israel and accepted the responsibility, we as the church today have to accept this responsibility that there's work to be done. Be encouraged this morning. Don't be burdened because of this mission. Be encouraged because just as God went before them then, He still goes before us now. Just as God defended them then, He still defends us today. And just as God provided for them then, he still provides for us today. He truly will never leave us, and He never will forsake us. Will we be true to Him by ensuring that it can be said of us this morning that we, as Lakewood Baptist Church, have left nothing undone of all that our Lord has commanded us? You know, almost anyone can begin a task. Even anyone can begin a task that's going to take 40 years to complete. But do we have the perseverance to finish the work? The Lord is wanting, and the Lord is willing to bless persevering obedience. No mission can become complete in a Christian life without persevering obedience being present. The completed mission of Joshua required persevering obedience. And it is this account of God finishing a great work that should encourage us this morning. It's his account that he finished the work that should motivate us and it should drive us to persevere for him today. The completed mission of Joshua should be an incentive to each of us today to press forward and share the good news of our Lord and Savior in order to complete the mission that the Lord has laid out for this church. The focus of our study this morning is going to use events from chapter 11 in Joshua that we can utilize as a help in reaching a conquest or reaching a completed mission for God. The first thing I want to point out is completion includes conflict. Completion includes conflict. Joshua chapter 11, verse 1 through 5, you'll see that there was many conflicts that come up against the children of Israel. Israel did not have a free ride, so to speak. They did not just wander around and eventually, after 40 years, come upon the promised land and stumble right into it. That's not the way it happened. And just as they didn't have a free ride then, we as a church don't have a free ride today. We must understand that when we set out to complete a mission for our Lord and Savior, we will encounter conflict. Many people today, when they encounter an opposition, they just lose their interest. They just throw in the towel, so to speak, and they move on to another project, or they move on to another task. This is not, and I repeat, this is not displaying a persevering obedience. And when we as Christians give up like this, we are forgetting the cause. We are forgetting what Christ done for us at the cross of Calvary. And we forget the devastation that lies ahead for those who die without knowing Christ as their Savior. These conflicts should not impair us, but these conflicts should empower us. Why? Because we should expect them. And when we expect the conflict, we have the expectation that our Lord has already defeated them. These conflicts will be beaten as long as we do our part as the children of God to remain faithful to Him. So just exactly what should we expect? First, we should expect conflict with Satan. Just as Satan tempted Adam and Eve, he still tempts us today, does he not? Satan has no boundaries on who he goes after. And he even proved this as he took Jesus Christ himself up to be tempted. Job chapter 1 reveals that Satan does enact evil. And Satan does cause harm on the face of this earth. 
He is real. We know that Satan was an angel of God that was created and turned against God's authority. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation at the sides of the north. It was because of this God cast Satan out of heaven, and he became known as the prince of this world. He became known as the ruler of all secular things. 1 Peter 5 8, we've referenced a lot lately. We need to reference again this morning that we should be sober, we should be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, truly doth walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan is the enemy of God, and Satan is the enemy of truth. And Satan does all that he can to tempt us and turn us away from spiritual matters. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 reminds us that Satan leads the whole world astray. And he works by various means. Satan appeals to our pride, does he not? Satan interferes with the teaching of truth, does he not? And let me warn you today that sometimes Satan has even been known to place false believers within our church. As stumbling walk. John chapter 8, 44 tells us that Satan is a liar, and he's not only a liar, but he says he is the father of lies. Satan has authority within this world, and we know he does, and we respect that he has the authority. But this morning as a church, and this morning as Christians, let me remind you that he does not have authority over our death. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that Jesus came as a man to die, destroying him who holds the power of death. The salvation that Jesus provides us fully releases us from Satan's stronghold. And we can proclaim that through the blood of Christ, death to us as a saved congregation has truly lost to <coughs> Conflict will not only come from Satan, but conflict also will come from the conflict of sin. <coughs> sin entered into this world by Adam and Eve and their disobedience. And then we know that sin is passed down to all people. We, are in, we here inherit the sin nature by birth. And it comes to all generations. The only exception was the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's why he was born of a virgin. He could not have been conceived of man and woman or he would have been born in the sin nature. And that would have taken away his qualification to be the perfect sacrifice. The rest of us enter this world with a sin nature. And the conflict of sin is real today. And it works by either reminding us of worldly pleasures in our life, or it will lure us in with hopes of worldly pleasures for our future. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, and sin will keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay. It is sin that has an appeal to us. It appeals of lust. It appeals to our comfort. It, it tries to give us a sense of belonging. It tries to give us a sense of fitting in. But remember today what the truth is. Lust is sin. It has no place in our life. Being comfort. Being comforted in this world is dangerous. Because our comfort lies in eternity. Where there's peace and contentment. If we're comfortable today, we are enabling other people to die and go to hell because we're not doing the work that God has set forth. We shouldn't fit in. We shouldn't belong. It don't mean we have to hate the world. It just means that we are to be separated and we are to be different. Sin is wrong and it cannot be messed around with, but it is a real conflict that we will encounter day in and day out. Get away from it. Stay away from it. It's dangerous. Remember, we will always be in conflict with sin. Sin is defined as any offense against God. And may we realize today that sin is a state of unrighteousness that separates from the harmony of God. Sin is what keeps us in the carnal flesh rather than in the spirit of holiness. It is us being not separated from the world. It is us promoting a lust-filled life instead of purity filled heart. If we want to complete any mission for Christ today, 
We need to realize that it involves conflict, and that conflict is with Satan, that conflict is with sin, and that conflict is with ourselves. Jesus made it clear that if we should follow him, we must deny ourselves. This means that we should give up our lives. We should give our lives up spiritually. We should give our lives up emotionally. And we even may have to give our lives up physically if necessary to die to ourselves. Paul explained in the Galatians the process of dying to self as being one in which he was crucified with Christ. Paul said that he, he no longer lives now, but it is Christ that lives in him. It means that Paul's old life, Paul's propensity to sin, Paul's propensity to follow the ways of the world is dead. It's gone. And the new life is one that he is filled with the Holy Spirit and one that he, he knows that the Lord dwells within him. And that's what we live for. We've got to remove our conflict of ourselves. We have to die to self today. And when we die to ourself, we remove the things of our old life. We remove our sinful ways. We remove our sinful lifestyles. And we go forward pursuing only things that please our God above. Completion includes conflict. Conflict with Satan. Conflict with sin. And conflict with self. The second thing we need to look at comes from verse 6 of chapter 11. And the completion of the mission will include confidence. Confidence is a feeling and it's a belief that you can do something and that you can succeed in something. We should all be going forward in our spiritual walk with a great amount of confidence. Joshua was told of the Lord, Be not afraid of them, for tomorrow about this time will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. Remember, there's a few things that our God cannot do. Our God can't change, our God can't let sin into heaven, and our God cannot lie. Lie. Our God cannot lie. And what this means to us is that today we should go forward with the confidence that God has promised again that He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 15, God, God says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee. Psalm 61 and 3, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower for my enemy. And in Psalms 34, 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their troubles. These are just three of hundreds of promises that our Lord has given us to claim. And may we claim these promises today, and when we claim them, may we stand on these promises today. Three things that we should have confidence in. First, we should have confidence in the person of God. The person of God. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord, or whose hope the Lord is. There is no one else worthy of our confidence. If you place your confidence in me, I promise you that I will eventually let you down. If you place your confidence in others, it's just a matter of time until you fall. But if we could ever learn to trust him, just trust him, wholly trust Him, fully trust Him, and have the confidence in the person of God, we will never fail. He didn't let us down when He was tempted by Satan, did He? He didn't let us down on the cross of Calvary, did He? And He didn't let us down by being in the grave when the stone was rolled away. He will not let us down today. Either. Do we have confidence in the person of God? But we should also have confidence in the promise of God. And we've already talked about some of the promises that He has made. And we can rest assured today that these promises will be kept. But I have to remind you here of another promise that should cause us to walk as Christians with our head held high. John chapter 14, 13, He promised, And I go and prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Why should we work for Him? It seems like such an elementary question, does it not? But we forget the answer. Because we are not a forgotten people. Our time on this sin field and this forsaken earth is limited. It might feel like an eternity while we're here. 
but it's limited. And it's only a short time compared to the eternity in heaven. And we can have confidence in the promise of God that He is coming again to receive us and to Himself. We must be busy. We must be busy serving God. And we must continue in the confidence of the purpose of God. The confidence in the promise of God. But we must also have confidence in the power of God. In the Great Commission, we see that all power, as the word exousia means jurisdiction, is given unto Him. All power is given unto Him. It starts from the power to speak into existence all of creation. The power to breathe life into our very souls. The power of being able to part the Red Sea. The power of providing a pillar of fire that would protect them and that would guide them. The power of defeating armies, no matter how great they are, that came up against his children. The power was given unto him. The power to cast out demons. The power to make the lame walk. The power to make the blind see. The deaf to hear. The mute to speak. And the power to make the dead even live again. And the power to defeat sin lies within our Lord and Savior. That's why we should be on a mission for Him. The power to do anything and the power to do everything that our Lord and Savior wants to be accomplished is given unto Him. And He shares that power with us. We should be as Christians today a people that proceed full of confidence. Not arrogance, but confidence that our God will allow us to complete the missions that He has placed before us. We do not run our race on our own. We do not fight our spiritual battles alone. But we must go forward and proclaim the gospel of our Savior, understanding that the confidence that we have is alive. And He reigns from this heavenly throne. Conflict can be expected. But when the conflict comes, may we have the confidence to move forward. The third thing I want to look at is completion of a mission also requires compliance. Compliance is defined as the action of abiding by or following a wish or following a command. If we want to comply and cause a mission for God to become complete, what must we do? Well, if you look in chapter 11, verse 7 through 15, and again for the sake of time, we won't read them all. But chapter or verse 7, Joshua came and he brought all the people of war with him. Verse 8, they left none of them remaining. Verse number 9, And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. In verse 10 through 14, we see the deliverance of the enemies, or the deliverance of the children from their enemies by means of war and individual accounts. And it brings us to verse 15, which we use as our main text. And so did Joshua. He left nothing undone that the Lord has commanded of us. I said as I opened this morning, and we, I hope we can be a church that can be said that we've left nothing undone. Done. How do we do this? How do we comply with leaving nothing undone of our Lord? Three things. First, listen to the Lord. We know we can't right easily physically hear the Lord speak. I'm not saying it don't happen. I'm just saying usually we don't physically hear the Lord speak. But how do we listen to the Lord? I believe we hear Him through His Word. And I believe we hear Him as we study the Bible. The truths that lie ahead of us are held in His Word. We can read of the prophecies and we can look ahead to the fulfillment of them. God will speak to us through His Word. God speaks to us through His Scriptures. And we know that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I simply ask you this morning, have you heard from God this week? And if you haven't, have you read His Word this week? It's a good place to start if we want to comply with completing a mission. After we listen to God, we should look to God to be in compliance. 
And we know we cannot physically see our Lord. So how can we look to Him? I relate this to our prayer life. In the Old Testament, you know, only the high priest was able to go into the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could go behind the veil and offer the sacrifice for all of the people. The rituals of the tabernacle, though, were done away with when our Lord hung His hands out on the cross and cried in His finish. When He gave up His ghost, the veil was rent from top to bottom. And what that done is that gave each and every one of us direct access to our Heavenly Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. If we truly want to accomplish a complete admission for Christ today, are we complying with His commands of pray without ceasing? Colossians chapter 4, 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me, call unto the Lord, and he will open our eyes, and he will allow us, as a church this morning, to see great and mighty things in this community that we can't even fathom to take place. Are we being compliant with our Lord's mission? Compliance is listening to the Lord. Compliance is looking to the Lord. And compliance is leaning on the Lord. To lean on the Lord means to me to live each day, to live each minute, and to live through each circumstance that we will ever face by nothing more than faith. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live... Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If we lose our faith, we are surrendering our strength by which we live. Completion of a mission requires a compliance with the commandments of our Lord and Savior. To complete a mission, we must understand completion does include conflict. Completion does include confidence. Completion includes compliance. And when these three things align together, we will understand that completion also includes compensation. Chapter, or verses 16 through 23 gives us this, and we'll just look at verse 23. So Joshua took the whole land Compensation was the whole land. And then the peace that we need today at the end of that verse. And the land rested from war. Church, we can be comforted today that our work for the Lord is not in vain. We should face our conflicts daily. Understand our conflict is going to come from Satan. Our conflicts are going to come from sin, and our conflicts are going to come from ourselves. But when we face these conflicts, we should have confidence in the person of God, confidence in the promises of God, and we should have confidence in the power of God to see us through. And it is that confidence that will then drive us to compliance if we listen to Him through studying His Word. If we look to Him by falling on our knees before Him, humbly in prayer, and when we lean on Him, living by faith, understanding that He will take care of our every need. When these things come together, we will see the compensation of our God to our mission. The earth that we trod today is full of wickedness. It is full of deceit. It is full of evil, and it is full of destruction. But there is coming a day in which good, there is coming a day in which perfection, and there is coming a day in which this very earth will be ruled and reigned by Jesus Christ himself. And when that happens, this earth will truly rest from all war. Until then, people need to be reached. Until then, people need to be saved. Until then, people need to be discipled. Until then, people need to be encouraged. 
And until then, people need to be, and I'll leave that blank for you to put the mission God's given you in that spot. Defeat confidence, or defeat conflict. Have confidence. Live in compliance. And look for our heavenly compensation. May we complete the mission that God has for us this morning. I'll close with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the time this morning. Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you I thank you for the account that you've given us throughout the Old Testament. Lord, the account of saving your children from the bondage of Egypt, Lord, and the, the wandering through the desert. Lord, all the things that you give us that we can learn from the Lord. And I just thank you for allowing us to see complete missions, Lord, that can be an encouragement to us. And I pray that today you protect us as a church, protect us as individuals, Lord, from the conflict of sin. And we may realize that, that sin separates us from you and that we just look to you and we keep sin dealt with. We know that you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. And I just pray that there be anyone in your house this morning again that's not known you as a Savior, that you just allow the Holy Spirit to show them that you paid a price. And they don't have to deal with the conflict of sin any longer. You can take that burden from them. And Lord, I just pray that you give us confidence in, in your promises, in your person. Lord, give us confidence in your power as we go forward to complete the mission that you've laid before us. And Lord, I just pray that you allow us to be compliant today, Lord. Allow us to fall on our knees before you. Allow us to study your word. Allow us to lean on you. And during this time of invitation, Lord, if you wait on anyone's heart or anyone's mind, something, Lord, I just pray that you allow us to be compliant to just get that settled. That we may follow you to put our personal agendas aside and realize that the time on this earth is limited and people are truly dying and going to hell. And Lord, we will thank you now for our compensation. We know that we won't see the compensation here, Lord, but in eternity with you in the streets of gold, worshiping and serving you for all eternity, without sin, in peace, there could be no greater compensation. I just pray that you be with this invitation time. Speak to the hearts and minds. Just have your way. Allow us to move as you speak. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.